This is the Hori. It's a tier 10 Japanese tech tree tank destroyer. And it's a mighty cringe vehicle. It's one I've reviewed on the channel many times in the past, and it always has a very similar title on any video I post, usually having to do with penetration. And that's because this vehicle has literally unlimited pen. It's one of the few tank destroyers I run Gun Rammer on because you don't need to run Cali. You have 400 mils of AP pen if you do, but who cares? You can already penetrate a Kron turret on most surfaces, and I just don't think there's really anything that can withstand a Hori. Maybe a Concept 1B hull down. I know that that can be very tricky due to the mantlet being around 500 mils, and an AMX M4 also is very tricky for a Hori to cut through because of the fact that its mantlet is upwards of 600 mils hull down. However, on the other hand, um, there's really just not much of a weakness when it comes to this vehicle's capabilities. It's quite mobile, reaching a top speed of 45. It reverses at 20. It has a very good accuracy value of 0 .308, and the tank has pretty good on-movement dispersion values. It has 560 damage per shot. It only loses about 10 or 15 damage when you're loading gold, which is basically nothing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a nasty tank. Oh, and it also has really good DPM. Oh, and it doesn't miss. So we get one easy bonk right into the enemy there. Unfortunately, we actually just lost uh, over a thousand health for that one brief poke. But, hmm, that was very disappointing, actually. I don't even know how we lost so much health, but, uh... Not much I can really do about that, but it's okay. Because we're going to get a bonk into the enemy WZ. You know, the interesting part about this is they're not hitting me in the lower plate. They're actually hitting me in the viewport. Which has to be some of the craziest luck I've seen in a while, because the chance of hitting that viewport is very small. But we're still getting out shells, which is pretty good. We're at 1600 damage at this point, which is alright. We've got the enemy super conk in front of us, and we're going to chill and aim it on his vehicle if he pokes again. We should be able to cut right through his mantlet, so that's... Well, we can also just shoot him in the upper plate, but yeah, we'll just go right through his mantlet. We get hit by an HE shell from what would be an enemy 183, and we're down to 47 health, which, uh, which isn't great. I actually think the reason we got hit so hard there is because the um, E100's camping behind us, and the 183 may have been shooting at the E100, and accidentally uh, ended up hitting us. So we're going to wait about two seconds. Oh, actually, it was the Yag that may have fired at me. Well, doesn't really matter. We get an easy shell into the Yag, and we've dealt 2,700 damage already, which is pretty good, judging that we're only at 40 health. Honestly, we would have been fine if the beginning of the game we didn't get bled for so much. So we're going to chill right here, and let's see, the VK is going to drive out in the open. Hopefully he doesn't uh, block too much. Hmm. Come on, Yag, shoot at the VK. You know you want to. Come on. I'm waiting for you. Interesting. Well, we know it wasn't the 183 that shot me, because the 183 is spotted all the way off in China. But I am very surprised to see that that Jagdpanzer is not even budging on that enemy VK-72. Alright, well, we have the minnow off to the side, and we're going to aim right in on his vehicle. Bonk! There you go. 560 damage shell straight through his tank. Now we reload. Now I am probably most likely dead here, just because of what the enemy team is doing. But I don't think it's too much of an issue. We're going to aim it on that Yag. Or actually, we could shoot the Stritzvon and bounce his upper plate. Well then, that's a, that's a classic World of Tanks moment there. <laughs> Alright, let's back up. Let's see if we can uh, somewhat get out of the situation we're in. Maybe we can aim it on that Stritzvon. Aiming and... Bonk, there you go. 550 damage shell into his vehicle. Not too bad. I mean, we've done a lot of damage, to be fair. And even though we're not going to win this, I can't really blame the Hori for why this is going to be a loss. We actually ended up doing pretty solid in this vehicle for everything that it's worth. So we're just going to wait right here. We're going to get a nice pen into the Super Conk. He actually doesn't manage to kill us with that shell, which is rather funny. I don't know if we're going to out-reload the Super Conk, but we're going to find out. No, it was like 0.1 seconds to get that shell. But, yeah, I mean, there wasn't much more we could have done. We bled a lot of health early game, but it wouldn't have been enough HP for us to play frontline and stop our team from being killed late game. We ended up dealing 4,400 damage, which was literally almost four times higher than the next on our team. Very unfortunate. I don't even know how a mouse 
does less than a thousand damage when you have 3k HP, but oh well, that's the way the matchmaker crumbles. So our first battle, we did okay. I mean, we bled a lot. And it was a little annoying that we were actually getting bled, because if you noticed, we weren't getting shot in the lower plate. The superstructure of the Hori and the hull where we were getting hit is actually quite strong. And what's really weird is usually that gunner port is the part that you can't pen on the tank. So I find it very odd that we actually got shot in the gunner port, and it looked like penned two times. What do I know? <laughs> Either way, uh, we are on probably the worst map in the game for a Hori, this being Port Bay. Um, and we're also up against Flossie, which is even more interesting. And he's in Platoon with Sinks, okay. Well, this will be a... This will be an interesting battle to play here. E50M, 113 GFT. I would say uh, that's a kind of cringe matchup, but we are also in a uh, pretty cringe vehicle as well. <laughs> Alright. Also, for any of you who are wondering why my name is uh, is the way it is, it's because uh, somebody donated a hundred dollars to me to change it, and I was like, "All right, we're gonna do it." So, I don't really know what to do here, to be honest. Um, the one thirteen is already in mid, and there's nothing I can really do about that. BZ 68s there. Uh, we see the one hundred gets shot. Oh, oh yeah, great plays from the IS four. What a skill boat player. Hmm. Okay, well, we got uh, Flossie getting absolutely bonked there. Okay, that's good, but not great. We're going to see. Oh, uh, E100, don't block me. Nice, okay, we get a shell out, but our E100 literally kills himself in the process, which is not obviously very good. We have the object 704, who... Okay, really? Alright. I'm going to aim it on the WZ, possibly. Oh, is he going to poke it? He is. Crazy. I'm getting shot from two different angles. Yep, 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 yep. Alrighty, this was a very, very enjoyable game. Let's at least get a shell into this player there. We have the mouse on our rear. VK90 in our front. Hmm. Uh, not really sure what to do here, but we're going to get a pen into the VK. We got penned again ourselves. I'm probably going to die. Unless one of our teammates pens a shot, I'm definitely dying. It's very annoying as well, because we are personally doing fine, but it doesn't really matter when that's my team. Well, we did 2,600 damage. The game was lost immediately. Unsurprisingly, that was an absolute steamroll. 6-0. But as Wargaming said, steamrolls don't exist with the uh, skill-based matchmaking, so clearly it's not the matchmaking causing these games, right? Well, we did 2,600 damage, which was easily top on the team. Again, basically uh, double everything else. We had an IS-4, 57% win rate player, who YOLOs off to the side of the map, does a total of 400 damage. What an absolutely fun battle. Well, let's do one more game in the Hori. Maybe we'll do a triple helping of gameplay today, because that's two losses in a row. I might have been able to deal 3k in that game if just a single player on our team would have penned the VK90 after I'd shot him twice. We were basically pinned in the position we were at. We had the 113 above us, we had the VK90 on our rear, and we had Flossie and the E50 shooting us in the back. So we were basically uh, having a triangle of death on every single corner we poked there, which was incredibly unenjoyable, but oh well. Um... I'm going to try and go up. Our 263 is going town, which is very disappointing to see, and so is our mouse. So essentially, we're down two of some of the most important tanks on our team. Thankfully, the Kron and 777 are going up, and the 263 looks like he finally collected his... No, never mind. I was going to say he collected his brain cells, but he's, uh, he's just sitting in the back there. Alrighty, well, we are going to make our way over towards the front here. The one thing I will say about the Hori is the gun has not let me down at all. I think we missed like one shell or bounced one shell in the Stritzvon, but it wasn't really the tank's fault. It was just an odd angle and it ended up bouncing. But as we can see, the Hori so far has been doing a pretty good result. The Leopard is leaving and I'm hoping that we can get a bonk right into the Leopard as he leaves. Aww. Uh, the shell velocity on this tank is not the best and you will notice that there. That shell could have hit, but was a little bit slower than I wanted it to be. Ah, oh, man, I should have just saved it because I could have hit him right there. Well, I guess that's my fault for uh, jumping the gun on that shot. Okay, well, the leopard's going to run into that rock in the back. Our mouse, unsurprisingly, has uh, killed himself. 
Got the VK. Let's see, I'm going to move up. Maybe we can get a shell into the STB if he tries crossing this here. We're going to find out. We also have the mouse right in the open. So let's aim it on that mouse and get our first pen of the game for 550 damage. Not too bad. We're not even spotted from that because of the angular we shot him at. Okay, well, our 263 is dead now. Not surprising either. So uh, we've lost two tanks. They've lost a zero. And they've basically lost zero hit points as well in that entire debacle. But we do get a pen into the enemy E100, which is pretty good at least. They have two mice. Are they in platoon? No. Okay. Well, we're down three tanks now. Um, that's pretty impressive, honestly. Four tanks. We're down four tanks now. I've done one shot or two shots of damage in that time. All right, well, we're going to wait for the mouse here to cross. Oh, we also actually have the VK-90 right in front. We get a nice pen into the VK-90, and we back on up. All right. Well, our mouse apparently wants to report everybody who went hill, because, you know, that makes sense. Let's just uh, poke the VK-90 and get a nice pen into his lower plate. We angle it out, but unfortunately, we don't get the bounce. All right, well, we get penned by the mouse, but that's okay, because we obviously have enough DPM and pen that we can turn that mouse into literal Swiss cheese. We're at 2,800 damage at this point, which is pretty good. Hoping the 100 ends up bouncing us, but chances are he probably won't. No, he doesn't. Very, very disappointing, but we did a pretty solid result here. Another 3,000 damage game and another absolute steamroll. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I mean, early game, we could have hit that STB if I had saved my shell a little bit longer. Leopard 1 was just a little bit slow shell velocity. However, again, uh, there's no way that it would have changed the outcome of this battle. Our mouse and 263 decided that they were going to go alone into town. And if that mouse had simply just maneuvered where I went and held mid here, probably could have been a win. Same for that 263. But, uh... Oh well, and then the rest of our team kind of appeared to have just YOLO'd into their spawn, and it ended up dying. This is the reality of the skill-based matchmaking here. This is what I've been dealing with uh, off and on for the past month after Wargaming has released these changes. The Hori is an absolutely fantastic vehicle, and you saw that. The gun is incredible. It doesn't really miss its shots. The one on the STB was my fault. I should have just waited. I didn't realize he was going to drive out in the open, uh, and the Leopard was just shell velocity. It is a little bit poor in that department. You could run Supercharger if you, you know, are going to be dealing with people at far distances, but the Hori is more of a midline tank, so I don't think that's entirely too important. For the most part, the gun is incredible, it pens everything, you saw what we turned that mouse into, it was literally butter. So, in that regard, I absolutely love the Hori. The downside of this tank is that it's a tank destroyer, and it means that you are not in the front of the team taking the shots and making sure that everybody doesn't fall apart. Basically, with the way the skill-based matchmaking works, if you aren't the player in the front line taking shots for your teammates, they're going to fall apart instantly, and you're going to lose every single time. And that's what's happened three games in a row. Uh, it's hard to say I enjoyed playing for today's video because there was nothing that I could have done to change the outcome of these games. It was just right from the beginning, steamroll to the end. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty disheartening when you... Uh, when you do so much, and yet it's so little in the grand scheme of the battle. Taking a look at our statistics on the vehicle for those three games, we still did 3,500 average. So, oh well. Let me know what you guys think about the Hori in the comments down below. It's an amazing tank, unfortunately, just like all tank destroyers, they are team dependent. And when you are not able to frontline and take the shots for the team, there's not much you're going to be able to do to win the battle. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.